Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Her Worship the Mayor for Gisborne, Rahit Stoltz. Well, it's a lovely honour and privilege to welcome you all here tonight. Um, it is humbling to be surrounded by so much talent, dedication and a passion for music. To our visitors from out of town, our performers, no my haramai, welcome to the coolest little city in New Zealand. Where the, the sun, yes. Where the sun is always shining, we have lovely people and we have the best music competition. So I do want to tonight just acknowledge our performers. Performers, I was so lucky that I could watch some of the live stream. So thank you also this year that even though we were not um, able to be here in person, I could watch a little bit of that from my office. So that is very good and thank you for that. But I do want to acknowledge our performers. They not only come here and show us what musical excellence is, they also give back to our community. They went into our primary schools to show our children how the cello work or how the flute work. They went into our high schools and gave a few lessons. And they went into our rest homes and created some music magic. So thank you so much for that. And yes. And then um, I also want to acknowledge everyone that is here tonight. Uh, this music festival is uniquely Gisborne, uniquely Tairawhiti. We do things our way. So I do want to acknowledge everyone here tonight that hosted one of our performers, that treated them like they were your family, that took them places, that brought them to the re their rehearsals, that cheered them on. Thank you so much for that as well. And then I would like to acknowledge Dame Bronwyn Holtzworth and uh, Professor Jack Richard, uh, who has always loved, supported and guarded over this uh, competition. Thank you so much. It has been 32 years. And then I, oh, there's a lot of clapping. We can talk, there's a lot of clapping. And then also Sir James Wallace, thank you for being with us again tonight. And thank you for, you've been such a, a long-term sponsor of our first prize. Thank you for being with us as well. And then it is my lovely, lovely honour to welcome and acknowledge our first honorary fellow, Margaret Dunsmore. Yes, Margaret. So Margaret, with her husband Ian, initiated the competition with the backing of our Rotary Club 32 years ago. And together with the Rotary Club, the Dunsmores nurtured and supported the competition for the first 25 years. Then when a new trust was established seven years ago, Margaret continued her involvement with the competition until her retirement last year. Thank you, Margaret and congratulations on being the inaugural fellow of the Gisborne International <laughs> Music Competition. <laughs> and then last but not least, I always say, we come into a beautiful venue and we enjoy beautiful music, but so much work happens behind the scenes. So I would like to thank every sponsor that contributed. And I want to acknowledge Trustee Rafferty, who has been ongoing supporters of this competition. Thank you. Without your backing, this will not happen. Um, uh, will not happen. So thank you so much that you sponsor this competition every year. And then just to finish, I know our bodies and our body clocks are telling us it is mid-August, but we do know it's early December. So I do want to take this opportunity, and this is the first time I'm saying this, have a lovely, peaceful, happy and healthy Christmas. Please recharge your batteries. Come back ready for a better 2021. Thank you. Thank you, Rahit. The Gisborne International Music Competition has been privileged to partner with Trust Hierarchy over the past six years to contribute to the strengthening and well-being of our community. I'd like to invite Trust High Rapid Chairman Dr. Paul Reynolds to say a few words. So, 
so no pressure on Trust Tairafi for um, ongoing. ongoing support. <laughs> Um, look, I've just got a couple of acknowledgements that I would like to make at the start. The first thing I'd like to do is to acknowledge Dame Bronwyn and the Gisborne Interna International Competition Trust for the exceptional work they have done in a year that has been like no other. The fact that they've managed to give us a competition uh, by simply getting their backs into it and being innovative and thinking about how are we going to do this, how are we going to keep this going, um, deserves special acknowledgement because here we are still having a wonderful time. Yeah. <laughs> and the second uh, point or um, um, compliment I'd like to pay is obviously to the competitors uh, because isn't it amazing the amount of talent that the team of five million has? And in particular, I think we should give a special acknowledgement to those of the competitors um, who went through the rigours of a COVID hotel um, to get here for the competition, uh, not to mention the indignity of the COVID test, uh, which if any of you have had it, um, is not indeed a pleasant experience. Having said all of that, um, the trust that I chair is delighted to support uh, this competition and a particular reason why we are attracted to it is not just because of the excellence that we have in, among us while it occurs, but it is because of the nature of this competition and everything that surrounds it. Her Worship has, has said a couple of things about those particular attributes, not the least of which is the way in which the competitors engage with our community, and particularly with younger people in our community, which is just a fabulous thing for them, and secondly, the way in which you all take these competitors into your hearts and into your homes, making this a truly unique experience for those who take part in it. As many of you may be aware, the Trust is on a journey um, around well-being in our community, and having something like this occurring, which is not just putting excellence in front of us in a formal theatre setting, but is taking that excellence out into our community so that people can experience it is a tremendous thing for all of us. So thank you all for being here tonight, and it's a great honour of mine to be able to stand up and talk to you like this. Again, congratulations to all who've taken part. Thank you, Dr Reynolds. Before we present the first of our awards tonight, I'd like to thank our collaborative pianist team. Sarah Watkins and Sonny Kim. I, I'd like to thank them for their professionalism, for the care they have shown for every competitor this week, and for the support they've shown for the competition all year round, because this, we'll start planning for this um, next week. <laughs> Between them, they prepared 31 different recital programs and performed 45 recitals this week. We are indebted to Professor Jack Richards for the multifaceted ways he supports this competition as patron. From hosting the collaborative pianist at his home to opening up his pool and generally ensuring that everyone has a high quality Gisborne experience to his financial support which has been appreciated more than ever this year. I'd like to invite Professor Jack Richards to present the next two awards. The winner of the New Zealand Woodwind Brass Player Award, supported by Professor Jack Richards, is clarinetist Benedict Van Duven. The winner of the Antonio Strings New Zealand String Player Award is Jackie Sue.
now like to invite the chairman of the Gisborne International Music Competition Charitable Trust, Dame Bronwyn Holdsworth, to speak and to present the Pultron Composites Award. Thank you, and it's, it's a great pleasure to be here tonight on the 32nd final of the Gisborne International Music Competition, and I'd like to welcome Mayor Riet, and thank you for your wonderful words, and also Dr Paul Reynolds, Chairman of Trust Hierarchy, thank you, and thank you for your tremendous support. And also I'd like to welcome all the sponsors, the hosts, wonderful host families, without which we, we couldn't run this wonderful, friendly competition, the jurors, collaborative pianists, competitors and guests. It's been a wonderful week of music from young New Zealand musicians. Congratulations, congratulations to all competitors for your achievements to date, and we wish you a really exciting and fulfilling life in music. We know that many of you will end up in professional orchestras, chamber groups and universities around the world, and we hope that you will remember fondly your time in Gisborne. Creativity is an integral part of every aspect of our lives through all stages of education, culture and technology. And one of the important aspects of this competition is our community engagement programme. And uh, Paul Reynolds has referred to that. And, and I want to thank, the, again, I again want to thank the competitors for their wholehearted involvement in it over the past week. And also to thank Mark LaRoche and Cathy Irons for their three-day residency at the Matapuna Training Centre last week, bringing out so much musical talent um, from among the students. And I was at the performance on the last day and it was truly inspiring. Actually, I think the Gisborne Herald said that, that I was moved by the performance, and I certainly was. It was so inspiring. And thank you also, Mark and Cathy, for your efforts this week. Thank you to our jurors, Justine and uh, Cormac and Bridget Douglas, for what I know has been a full and fascinating week. This is actually a return visit for Bridget and Justine, who, who embody the qualities we seek in our jurors, including technical expertise, musicianship, reputation and generosity of spirit. And I'm sure that the competitors here tonight, when they had their private audition um, with the jurors, would, uh, would acknowledge that generosity of spirit. And I also want to join with others to thank the terrific work of our collaborative pianists. We all actually want shoes like yours, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and, and, um, and, and Jack Richards suggested that she might also get um, sparkly gloves for next time she plays. <laughs> um, so, but I do thank you for your sensitivity, your encouragement, and the huge and varied bodies of work you have performed. I believe that we needed an appreciation of the arts and music and history to enable us to recognise intrinsic value and to have a sense of enduring worth. And my special thanks go to our sponsors who understand this, both local and national sponsors, but they understand that concept and have put their faith in our ability to create an internationally recognised music competition. Many thanks to Trust Hierarchy, and we're going to hold you to the uh, ongoing um, support. <coughs> Our principal sponsor since, since 2015. Their support is significant affirmation of the aims and, and success of the, uh, the competition and of its importance in enhancing the cultural, social and economic well-being of the district. So to all our sponsors, our wonderful hosts, volunteers, I say thank you for your generous engagement over the years in a considerable community initiative. I also want to acknowledge our patron, Jack Richards, my fellow trustees and advisory trustees, honorary secretary and treasurer, Bill Harding, and Jill Armstrong, our host coordinator. We have exciting plans for next year to reinvigorate and broaden the competition, including a rebranding exercise and further outreach initiatives responsive to our community. So watch this space. And now, Mark, I think it's time for the prize winner Thank announcement. You. So the winner of the Pultron Composites Award for the best performance of a work by a New Zealand composer 
Isabella Gregory. Because of the diverse range of orchestral instruments entered in this competition, it has not been possible to include compulsory works or test pieces. Instead, we offer a prize for the best performance of a work by Johann Sebastian Bach, whose original or transcribed works are accessible to all orchestral instrumentalists. I'd like to invite Zach Holdsworth to present this next award. The winner of the Holdsworth Family J.S. Bach Prize is Kehi Lee. I'd like to invite Amanda Field Wilson to present this next award, which has been named in honour of competition founder Ian Dunsmore. Ian initiated the Gisborne International Music Competition in response to the 1988 Cyclone Bowler to create an event that would both promote the region positively and benefit the community. And I think Ian would be proud of the way the competition has evolved and amplified those initial goals, particularly in this extraordinary year. The winner of the Ian Dunsmore Memorial Jury Prize supported by Amanda Field Wilson, Dr. Graham Wilson, is flutist Yun Sang Yoon. One such evolution has been the introduction of an Audience Choice Award, where audience members, wherever they are in the world, were able to rank and vote for their favourite performers from the semi-final, which is also broadcast live. They were able to vote using an app that's been specially developed for us. This award has been supported by Jean and Robin Bennett, and I'd like to invite Jean to present this award. The winner of the inaugural Audience Choice Award, supported by Jean and Robin Bennett, is Nathan Pinkney. This week, we've been treated to over 25 hours of music. But only two people have been present for every moment with their ears tuned to every nuance and musical gesture. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank our 2020 jurists, Bridget Douglas and Justine Cormack, for their professionalism and absolute integrity, not only in their decision making, but also in the care and expertise they've brought to their post-performance interviews when all of the musicians. Uh, please welcome Bridget Douglas and Justine Cormack. Thank you, Mark. Um, we are so lucky in this crazy COVID year to have this world-class event, the Gisborne International Music Competition, that over a week offers the opportunity for young musicians from around the world, or this year for young New Zealanders around the world and in New Zealand, um, to come to Gisborne for a week and perform over a, a multi-layered um, um, event. Thank you so much 
to Mark, Kathy, the brilliant pianists, uh, the trustees, the sponsors, and everyone involved in Gisborne who has supported and hosted us in various ways. Thank you. Um, I'm sure there were times when you wanted to throw in the towel this year, Mark, but we're really glad that you persevered. Uh, Thank you to everyone who played, not only tonight, but in the first round and the semi-finals last night. We know how, how, much, how much hard work has gone into the preparation of a full competition program like this. It has been such a pleasure and privilege for Justine and I to listen to you all. We're really lucky to have so many talented young New Zealanders here. Uh, we really enjoyed having the opportunity to meet with the contestants on Thursday and this morning to give our feedback in person. We felt that this was an especially important part of the competition. I know from my own personal experience as a competitor here many years ago how invaluable this particular competition experience was for me and how much I grew and learnt from it as a direct result. In fact, I probably learnt the most the first time I entered the competition and I didn't progress past the first round as it forced me to think very carefully about it was I needed to focus on so I could do better next time. Uh, part of that focus came from moving my accommodation option from a, a tent that blew down um, at the campground at the beach to um, one of the very comfortable um, billets houses. So. <laughs> um, our judging criteria has included technical excellence, a beautiful and varied tone, along with intelligent and informed interpretive decisions that create a musically convincing and engaging performance consistently across the entire range of repertoire presented. We have been listening for players who have a depth of understanding of the music they are playing and the ability to communicate that emotionally and artistically with the audience. I'm going to hand over now to Justine. So to further explain the sorts of criteria we've been working with, um, of course, judging musical performance is a subjective thing. Um, that being said, throughout this week, it's been wonderful how Bridget and I have been very much in alignment in terms of our responses to all the performances. Uh, we've, we've been very much looking for stylistic awareness between all the various um, musical um, works that each competitor has been playing from the different eras. Um, tonal con control, so this comes in uh, to how uh, the vibrato is incorporated into the sound, the support of, sorry, the support of uh, the long phrases, integrating vibrato to really colour the, the music appropriately. Of course, pitch control. Uh, we're really looking for variety variety in colour palette, in character, and in drama. Um, very much so looking for creativity and personality. And in particular, we really want to see uh, or hear uh, the performer on stage, their particular personality and their innate musicality. Uh, so for them to do that, it's very much bringing all of their skills, all of their musicality, all of their technical prowess to fully express themselves and engage with us and communicate with us. So we're, we're going to be announcing the next, the, the top four prizes next. But before that, I just the, the winning performance tonight uh, for both of us, it was very much a performance of intensity of musical purpose and that this never let up. Uh, the player really drew us in completely and it was an utterly committed and convincing performance. Um, that being said, we've been treated to three very fine performances tonight and um, congratulations, you three. Congratulations to everybody and thanks for having us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The winner of the most, most Promising Player Award, supported by the Dean Endowment Trust, is Diane Hugh.
I'd like to invite Dr. Robin Bryan to present the first of our finalist awards. The winner of the third prize, supported by Dr. Robin Bryant, is Isabella Gregory. The second prize tonight will be presented by Mary Hitz Stoltz, and the first prize will be presented by Sir James Wallace, who has generously supported this award. The winner of the second prize, supported by the Jim and Tom Hickey Charitable Trust, is Catherine Clark. <laughs> and the winner of the Wallace Foundation first prize is Hain Kim. Thank you everyone for supporting the Gisborne International Music Competition, wherever you are in the world. For those of you joining us in the theatre, I warmly invite you to join us for a drink outside in the foyer. Nore ra, tenakoto, tenakoto, tenakoto katoa. <laughs> <laughs>